Colorado River District is a quasi-governmental entity. We represent 15 counties in western Colorado. If you own property in some county, you are a constituent. You'll get your tax bill. It'll be a small fee that you pay to us. And as taxpayers have been doing since 1937. But if you probably also heard that this is an El Nino year, and uh, what happens in an El Nino year, not all the time, but often is that storms track uh, south of here, generally uh, below the I-70 Carter. And uh, so El Nino years aren't always good for Summit County, and they can be even worse for the Amba Steamboat area. If anybody here is a skier or a snowboarder or enjoys uh, Nordic skiing, you probably uh, thought, yeah, that's just the way my ski year felt. That was, that was a pretty weak line. Um, I'm Scott Lamarai, I'm the Water Commissioner for the Blue River Basin. I work for the uh, Division of Water Resources. And um, when these meetings first started, most some of you might know that I didn't wear glasses and my hair was a different color. <laughs> so, um, and even though we have this lovely moisture outside, Everybody's asking me, are, you know, is it adding to the snowpack? Is it adding to the snowpack? No, it's not. It's keeping us even. It's keeping us the status quo. So snowpack conditions here in the Blue River Basin today, I'll try not to steal the bureaus or Denver's thunder. Um, of the five automated snow tail sites, uh, the average was 69.5%. Okay, that's not good. Um, the high snowpack is at Hoosier Pass with 89%. And down at Summit Ranch, down by the Slate Creek Ranch, Mr. Mosier, snowpack's down to 4% of average. So low snow is really going fast. Um, so this moisture that we are getting, it is helping us maintain what we do have on the mountain. Most of our snowpack during the blue sits above the Snowpack above the reservoir is 77% right now today. So um, stream flows right now are below average because of this cool weather that we've had coming on. We're in a, a very unpredictable pattern through the weekend. We're supposed to have more uh, warmer conditions next week, which will bring our runoff back on. We had a pretty good start to the runoff in about the third week of April. And then this weather changed and it's cooled everything off and backed, and backed everything off. Green Mountain was, was built for, for two purposes primarily. One was, is when uh, we divert water at Granby and Willow Creek out of priority uh, when there's a call, a downstream call. We need to make up for that water. And so one third of Green Mountain Reservoir is set aside for that purpose. So we make releases to offset the amount we're taking at Granby during that time. Uh, the second is, is to provide some, uh, some uh, storage and, uh, for the West Slope beneficia beneficiaries. More recently, uh, we generally have a little extra water at the uh, latter part of the season, and we use that uh, for the endangered fish down in uh, a 15-mile reach near uh, Grand Junction. <laughs> When I went on the, on the way driving to the building, I drove over the dam room and looked at the spillway. And since the water is about that far down from the top, I'm pretty confident we're going we're gonna to fill it. Okay, so uh, I'm Bob. I want to talk to you a little bit about, about what I think is going to happen this year. Uh, I wanted to start out with uh, just showing you a schematic of our water collection system. So, um, <coughs> Areas. These are the uh, four main watersheds that we get our water from. Uh, in an average year, about half of our water comes from the South Platte Basin, which is this yellow area. And then roughly a fourth from uh, where we are today, the Blue River Basin. And then the other fourth comes from the uh, Moffat Tunnel Collection System, which that's what you should expect if the weather is dry from now on. If the weather is uh, wet from now on, then we're going to have more weeks of good rafting, uh, fewer weeks of good fishing. I got to give a, uh, a little plug for our conservation program. Um, the dark blue line shows our uh, growth and the number of customer accounts. And uh, you know, it's, you know it's, we're a growing city, so our number of accounts has been going up. The purple line's been our water use. So it, it goes up and down according to whether we were having a, a wet summer or a dry summer, because that affects long watering. But if you look kind of overall, overall, our usage has been staying pretty steady, maybe even dropping a little bit. 
while our uh, number of customers is going up. So that's that's something we're um, happy to see. The question was, do we have any methods to look at the uh, dust on snow and uh, consider that when we look at the inflow? Um, no, we don't. We are Denver Water is funding research that's trying to get at that very question. Uh, you know, how, how does the, the dirty snow affect the timing of the runoff? But we don't really have any answers yet on, on how to, I mean, we know it affects the runoff timing, but we don't, we haven't been able to quantify it, so not yet. I think that's a, a few years down the road. Now we're moving from the nuts and bolts of uh, hydrology and reservoir operations into something larger, and that's uh, water and the role it plays in the uh, Colorado economy, especially uh, on the Front Range. And our guest tonight to discuss this is Tom Binning. Uh, this, this study, as Jim mentioned, was commissioned by the Front Range Water Council uh, over a year ago. And the full study is available both on the Front Range Water Council's website, which I don't have the URL for that, but it's also on our website, which is uh, www.summiteconomics.com. For the members of the Front Range Water Council, I'll let you read for yourself. Well, he's a true weather geek. Um, and you really want to know what's going to happen, and this is especially good for those who uh, like to ski or um, know what's happening with the um, river flows. There's a flyer out there, and you can join a webinar um, every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. All the information is right here, and uh, you'll get a really good insight into what the weather is going to be doing and how the drought's shaping up in the region and, and other interesting weather facts. Talk a little bit about the water policy in general, what we're doing at the district, to, uh, what we're working with uh, elected officials throughout western Colorado. We uh, heard Scott Hummer say that the Blue River's on a year round call. That means it's one of the few places on the West Slope that there's no water available. Denver was here in the 1950s. I, was there once here in the 1950s? Or, yeah. Yeah. Eight 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 okay. So most of the development of, of Summit County has been post Dillon Reservoir. So you're developing under water rights that are junior, not just junior to Green Mountain, but junior, junior to both Denver and Green Mountain. So what your negotiators are wanting, and I think they're going to be succeeded in this, they're doing quite well at this, is to getting a stable water supply for Summit County as well. Um, our mission is to uh, protect, restore, and promote the healthy view of the watershed through community, education, stewardship, and resource management. <coughs> Colorado Water uh, Trust Workshop is May 17th at the Silverthorn Pavilion, 9 a.m. And you should check out their website at coloradowatertrust.org. You can get more information about that. Uh, May 22nd is Summit County Cleanup Day, and it's going to be a countywide cleanup day. And uh, stay tuned for the summer because we will have um, some educational and outreach events in relation to several uh, stream cleanup and um, events of that nature uh, here in the county. So if you'd like to get involved um, in any capacity, uh, we always welcome volunteers, questions, and uh, anything else that keeps brief. Uh, if you'd like more information, uh, blueriverwatershed.org is our website, and we'll be updating that in events relevant articles uh, in the near future. These, uh, these PowerPoints will be up on the Colorado River District website. That's coloradoriverdistrict.org. Give me a few days, but um, you'll see, you'll be able to review these and perhaps uh, you know, if you belong to a civic group, you can uh, go over these with your group if you're so interested, but the resource will be there. Drive safely. Thank you for coming out and paying attention to uh, 